The mobile scooters that ride around here, all these old people can't ride them on the sidewalk? No, nope, not according to the Oregon Department of Transportation. I'll look it up for you, just so you can show us no, that I'm not... Join U.S. corrupt cops on YouTube for an intense story. When corrupt cops mess with the wrong lady in $500,000 lawsuit, subscribe for exclusive content, hit like to support justice, and share to spread awareness. Don't miss the action. Subscribe, like, and share now. On the night of November 19th, 2018, two cops in Brookings, Oregon, pulled over 49-year-old Jennifer Gaiman. She was on her way home after a night of karaoke. Miss Gaiman, dealing with a bunch of health issues like best disease, macular degeneration, QPD, asthma, lumbar degeneration, and peripheral neuropathy, was cruising on her three-wheeled mobility scooter. The encounter with the officers makes you wonder about the tough situations she must deal with due to her health problems. I just want to go home. It's freezing. It, it, it is cold. Yeah, why are you stopping me then? I've okay, been I've, this I'm gonna, I'm, two years I'm gonna explain it to you in a second. We're stopping you because you're on a sidewalk with it. Yeah, you because rode through it a is crosswalk. The, it's, a, it's, it's a legal thing on a sidewalk. Look it up. It's a mobile scooter. It's a mobile scooter. Okay, okay. It's an electronic scooter. No, yeah, it's a mobile scooter. Oh, okay. Okay, do you understand what that means? It's my mobile scooter. It's how I get around. I don't have a car. Okay? It's like I... Yeah, it's like Iris. He goes on... Yeah, because I'm getting pissed off. Because I want to go home. You guys are pulling me off for no reason. It's like Iris. It's like Iris. You know Iron, the blue guy with the guy who rides her? It's exactly like his, except it's got two seats. That's all it is. It's Why? Scooter. Exactly. Do you deny that it's electronic scooter? It's not electronic scooter, and I can ride it on a sidewalk. Is it gas powered? No, it's not gas. Okay. I so it's go. electronic. I'm cold. You guys are you're, cold. You're not free to leave. Yeah, I am. No, you're, no, not, you're not, not. Yeah, I am because you legally cannot stop me. You're lawfully detained right now. You are For what? literally on a lawful traffic stop. For what? Stop. You see those red and blue lights? For what though? Are you gonna Give let me... him explain it? Yeah, because you don't have a reason to. You guys are legally, uh, you're, ta you're taking my disability act and you're throwing it out in the garbage. This no is my disability time. scooter. This is how I get around. And you know that. You've seen me many times around this town riding it. Okay, are you going to let him explain to you why you're actually on the lawful traffic stop? Okay, so we stopped you because it was actually looked up before, okay? You can't ride this in a crosswalk on the sidewalk. Are you kidding me? Miss Gaiman is in a legal dispute with law enforcement in Oregon about whether her electric scooter is considered a motor-assisted scooter under state law. The law defines such scooters as vehicles with up to four wheels, a seat, and the ability to be powered by a motor or human effort, with electric models limited to 1,000 watts and a top speed of 24 miles per hour. Despite Miss Gaiman's scooters meeting these criteria, a specific law, section 814.524, prohibits operating them on sidewalks, except for entering and exiting adjacent properties. Ms. Gaiman argues that her scooter is crucial for her mobility, citing the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, which mandates reasonable modifications for individuals with mobility disabilities. The legal challenge arises from conflicting interpretations of whether the ADA applies to public sidewalks. Section 35.10 of Title II claims authority over services provided by public entities, a position supported by the Ninth Circuit in the 2002 case of Barton v. City of Sacramento. However, the Fifth Circuit, in the 2010 case of Frame v. City of Arlington, excluded sidewalks from the ADA's jurisdiction. Given that Oregon is under the Ninth Circuit and awaiting Supreme Court clarification, a hypothetical court might lean towards the ADA covering sidewalks. In this situation, Ms. Gaiman could argue that allowing her scooter on the sidewalk is a reasonable accommodation within Oregon law. So, with the mobile scooters that ride around here, all these old people can't ride them on the sidewalk? No, nope, not according to the Oregon Department of Transportation. I'll look it up for you, just so you can show us, know that I'm not messing with you, and he's not messing okay, with you. Okay, so I'll let everybody know that you guys have bad laws in this town, and that people it's that have Oregon. disabilities... No, you know what? This disabilities. Okay? These people ride these scooters for disability. You want them riding on the streets to get hit by a car? Are you kidding me? I don't make the rules. Yeah, well. I'll grab some information. Do you, do you have an ID on you? I don't need to give you my ID. You do. You are lawfully detained. You've been explained that. You will provide your name oh. or identification. Miss Gaiman is stopped by officers who insist she reveals her identity even though there isn't a specific law requiring identification for reasonable suspicion, 
Oregon law says you must provide ID during a traffic stop. Not showing a driver's license in this situation is a Class C misdemeanor under Section 807.570 of Oregon law. However, if you show a valid license later, it's a valid defense. While Section 801.5 includes scooters in the definition of a vehicle, Section 807.570 emphasizes that having a valid license is a good defense focusing on discouraging driving without a license rather than punishing people for not identifying themselves. Regarding Ms. Gaiman's mobility scooter, Title II of the ADA says the city must make reasonable modifications, but Section 35.137 lets a public entity ask for credible assurance of disability-related device use, state-issued disability parking permits, or a verbal representation without contradicting facts are accepted assurances. Though the officers could stop Miss Gaiman, a court might confirm her assurance of a mobility disability if sidewalk use is seen as a necessary modification. Because I want to get home! It's cold and you guys are with me, and you've not seen me riding this many times, and you know it. There's my ID. I've never seen you riding this Yes, around. you have. Can I please get my ID back then? No, you will get it back once we're... Once we finish. You asked me to show you what the rules were. No, I just want to go. I can look them up myself. No. I'm cold and I want to go and nope. shower. Oh, really? I have no warrants. I have nothing. Copy. Thank you. Give me back my ID. No. You are not free to go right now. You're not free to go until we are finished. I'm finished with you. I'm not going to say the whole word. And I can't look at that because I can't see your phone. So, in Oregon, since this is a electronic scooter, you're not allowed to have passengers on it. That's one rule. You are it's required to, to wear a helmet. Nice. You are. You are not allowed to ride out on sidewalks. You're not allowed to ride it in crosswalks. All right? In this situation, a woman named Miss Gaiman, who uses a mobility scooter due to a disability, is stopped by a police officer. The officer claims that she is not allowed to use crosswalks, carry passengers on her scooter, and must wear a helmet while operating it. The officer refers to specific sections of the Oregon law to support these assertions. Although there is an exception for individuals with disabilities regarding crosswalk use, there is no such exception for wearing a helmet or having passengers. The situation becomes complicated when considering how the Americans with Disabilities Act ADA, interacts with state laws. While the city is required to make reasonable accommodations for Miss Gaiman's scooter use, the ADA doesn't grant her complete freedom from following relevant laws. The lack of a clear connection between Miss Gaiman's disability and the requested modifications raises doubts about the validity of her claims. Despite the absence of a specific legal precedent, it's unlikely that a judge would exempt Miss Gaiman from the cited laws solely because of her disability. The scenario concludes with officers issuing multiple citations to Miss Gaiman over a 15-minute period. Miss Gaiman got pulled over by the cops for riding her scooter without a helmet. Even after getting citations and being told she couldn't ride home without a helmet, she decided to ride anyway. The cops chased her with lights and sirens, eventually arresting her and charging her with attempting to evade police and interfering with an officer. She got convicted of a Class C felony and got a jail sentence and probation. Miss Gaiman appealed the conviction and also filed a federal lawsuit claiming unlawful detention discrimination based on disability, and other charges against the officers. The lawsuit is still pending, with a pre-trial conference set for March 8, 2021. The police department got a C-minus for their behavior, with criticism for poor judgment. Miss Gaiman also got a C-minus, as her decision to evade arrest was seen as illegal and childish, despite potential misconduct by the officers. The likelihood of qualified immunity for the officers is discussed, but Miss Gaiman's discrimination claim poses a challenge. The situation is a reminder that resisting arrest, even if you think it's unfair, can lead to legal trouble. 
We are witnessing a justice battle as corrupt cops clash with a determined and powerful woman. Support us on the U.S. Corrupt Cops YouTube channel to follow this dramatic story. Subscribe, like, and share the video to spread the message of justice and encourage action against corruption. You are an essential part of this fight. Stand with us until the end.